Hi everybody, Bobby from the Rabbitry Center. Today I wanted to talk about meat production and why uh, so many folks these days are starting up their own production. The other day I seen a comment uh, someone asked, don't we have enough meat to eat? And you know, I don't know if it was rhetorical or not, but I still wanted to, to, to address that and, and answer that in detail today. Here we go. First, I want to warn some folks, I'm going to process some rabbits today and talk about this while I work. Uh, just we're going to let the camera roll and uh, I'm going to keep processing while I talk about why. So if you're not interested in that, I'll give you a chance to click off. This video is for uh, meat production at home and for those folks that are interested in pr producing their own meat. So I'll give you a few seconds to shut off. The reason why chickens are produced the way they are is because farmers and geneticists have worked for years perfecting production and you know growing big birds the rabbit industry has never had that the reason why folks are getting away from the chickens is because you know those birds are so big and they look like frankenstein because they have to be we're feeding millions and millions of people and the the fact that they've gotten the feed to meat ratio down to two to one for chickens is amazing you give up for what you get when you're talking about a bird like that's got chemicals in it then you got to distribute it Distribution means that it's going to have to have preservatives in it and if it's got preservatives in it That means that the food could possibly be changing colors and that means that there may be dyes in it So now you're talking about the food that's in the markets because someone asked don't we have enough food to eat? Well that food that we have has been shipped and has been pumped with chemicals and it's not as healthy as we think even though the United States have more chemicals in our food than most other countries It doesn't mean it's actually safe. So that's why more people are entertaining beef grass-fed beef, raising their own livestock so they can have high quality meat for their families. And you know, you wonder who who's doing this? Who's buying these rabbits? Everyone from, from ditch diggers to lawyers to doctors, almost all of us are doing it for the same reason. There's a lot of people that are eating rabbit and producing rabbit for other reasons like heart disease. You know, if you look at the USDA breakdown of rabbit, it beats everything, it beats them all. It's the highest in protein, lowest in fat, lowest in calories. If folks are battling heart disease, rabbit is an excellent alternative to chicken or beef. Venison is an excellent alternative to, to beef. You can buy some grass-fed beef that when you go to fry up burger, it doesn't even have grease in it. It's, it's just higher quality. We're always breeding for favorable characteristics. We may want certain size, certain color. Um, you know, we're trying to, to fix our, our herd. Uh, you know, there's also rabbits that don't beat a, an eye infection or maybe they got fly strike or a bot fly larva or something like that. You know, you just, you can't use the rabbit anymore. A breeder that wasn't putting out big litters or wasn't uh, contributing the way that you wanted your rabbit to. You'll also process more bucks than you will does because when it comes to a trio, you got one buck and two does. So these are the rabbits that are getting processed. I'm in my John Deere parking spot and whenever I'm in here, it, it echoes. So I try not to stand in here. And, but this is the last rabbit of the day. You know, folks often a ask me too, how do you get the kids involved? You know, is that even important? Should I be doing that? I think you absolutely should be getting the kids involved. You know, you educate them, you teach them that this is high quality food for the family. It helps us sustain and you know, it's the reward of our hard work. It's just so valuable to grow your own vegetables and meat. And I tell you what, your kids will waste less. They will appreciate it more. And remember that they will grow and develop better. We all will when we have higher quality food. I know with all my heart that rabbits are here to balance the ecosystem, feed the wild, feed humans, sustain life, or they wouldn't be able to produce the way they can. You know. All these animals have these strengths and attributes for a reason. Rabbits are hands down the best livestock animal in my opinion. They're, they don't take up a lot of space. They're pretty inexpensive to raise. They're quiet. And let's not forget, they're cute. And they're fun. So, you know, raising rabbits is a pleasure. So I love getting folks started with their breeding stock and knowing that they're going to get to live a higher quality of life. They're going to get to enjoy their, their rabbits and they're going to be able to put high quality food on the plate. 
that gives me a good feeling. And it's funny how many folks out there don't know where their food's coming from. They don't care. They just assume that it's always been there, so that means it's good or it's good enough. And it's important that we, we take control of that and we start making the best choices we can for our family. And you know, don't forget that you always can take your rabbit meat and trade for something else. You can trade for grass-fed beef. I used to trade rabbit for honey before I became a beekeeper. If you're interested in beekeeping, check out our channel, Bobby's Bees. So when I process my rabbits, um, I'll throw them in a tub of cold water just to get the, the meat cooling down right away. I'll take them inside. I'll let them uh, rest for a couple hours before I quarter them. I like to quarter our rabbits. We use a food saver or you can use uh, freezer bags. You can vacuum seal in your sink. I'll put a video up in the corner if you want to see how we do that. Um, now you can eat these rabbits right away too. It's not going to taste bad or, or anything like that. Uh, you know, some folks say that it's best to let your, your meat rest. I, I personally don't really taste a difference. You know, it's exciting to grow your own chemical free meat and you know if you're wondering what rabbit tastes like it tastes a lot like chicken and but it's wild it's wild like kind of like turkey's wild you know it's one of those things it's it tastes kind of it takes on two different tastes kind of like frog legs if you ever had frog legs it tastes like chicken but it almost has a touch of seafood in it so it's important to try the rabbit before you start your production you know where you might have allergies with chickens rabbits are less likely to cause allergy problems so but it's important to try it first you can try a whole foods or you can try a pelfries uh roaster fryer rabbit pelfries foods are actually the biggest the largest rabbit production and you can find some good quality rabbit there it's expensive because it costs a lot to produce and ship and distribute high quality rabbit meat so that's why again it's so important to have your own production in the backyard especially now i tell you with everything that went on with the pandemic i'm not really a doomsday type of guy but uh, for the first time in my life i actually went to the store and experienced a meat shortage we didn't have chicken we didn't have and it and it really was a good feeling knowing that i could get venison from the woods and rabbit meat from our rabbitry now if you're curious we have lots of processing videos that uh, will help you process your rabbits just want to thank everybody for watching today again you know this is just my opinion but i think raising rabbits has changed my life for the better and i recommend it for everybody uh, especially if you're a meat eater stay tuned for breeding your rabbits in freezing temperatures we share how we keep our litters alive and we've limited our losses using kindling totes thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video